I don't think I've ever seen a scam of this precedent on the entire YouTube platform. Now, YouTubers themselves, they can be pretty slimy people. For example, loads of them will do fake gift card giveaways. If you subscribe or click the link in the description, you can get some kind of gift card. Only the gift card doesn't exist. It's just bait for you to join the channel. Another prime example is Mr. Beast. If you subscribe to Mr. Beast, apparently you get a free cookie. Well, I actually subscribed five minutes before hitting record on this video, and I'm still yet to receive a cookie. So what's up with that, Mr. Beast? But this is a story of a YouTuber being scammed. Now, this revolves around Umpaville. Very good YouTuber. He's huge. He's got nearly 5 million subscribers. And he was basically scammed of over $1 million by, unfortunately, what he thought was a friend. Now, I do want to suspend your disbelief. This isn't about, like, the case of a missing CSGO knife or a stolen Roblox login and all the clothes were sold for Robux. Umpaville basically wanted to sell his own candy company. And this was an incredibly intense and expensive process because, for example, getting stuff regulated by the FDA is pretty difficult, despite their standards being as low as the Mariana Trench. Basically, it's a lot easier to sell like merchandise and clothes than food. Food has to go through a lot more restrictions. And he hired a team, he had a warehouse, but the problem is one of his warehouse employees was actually using the company funds to fund his gotcha addiction. The guy was into crypto, he was into gotcha games, he was a gotcha whale. And he got you? He got me! <laughs> $10,000 a month in gotcha games. You're $10,000. <laughs> A month. Yeah, or yeah, in gotcha someone's, games. Someone's $10,000 a month in gotcha games. If you don't know what gotcha is, that is perfect. That is great. You can stop watching the video. If you really want to know what gotcha is, Genshin Impact. Do I need to say more? No, no, of course I don't. Now, the thing is, this guy was spending 10K of the company's money per month on gotcha to fund his addiction. He had been siphoning company funds for upwards of two years. Now, this candy company started back in Virginia four years ago, 2019. About four years ago, in 2019, I wanted to diversify my sources of income as any young entrepreneur, which I am not, but any young man with a, with a mental illness would want to do, make more money. And I was like, what can I do to make money on YouTube that isn't just the same thing that everybody else does? And I settled on uh, potentially creating a candy company because I love candy. And obviously, it just started as a side hustle because YouTubers always have side hustles, whether it's merch, sponsors, crypto, or writing a book that no one below the age of 12 ends up buying. Now, the original idea came from Umpaville and his cousin Clint, who thought the best idea to make money was to sell candy. So my cousin and I, Clint, we were just brainstorming, having a little bit of a powwow. And uh, we both kind of came to the conclusion, what if we just tried all the candy out there and we decided what was best and then we made our own version of that. Now, Clint was in charge of the maintenance department. They actually started by learning and reading books about candy, you know, because obviously it is a very intense process to deal with anything food-wise. Now, this venture started off in small steps with originally Umpaville basically wanting to get his family involved in the business to, you know, kind of do some trial steps before he went into spending hundreds and thousands or even millions of dollars of his own money. The first steps would be, would have been for me at the time to ask my family for help, basically, to see if they would be willing to work with me. Because I believe at the time I still, I hired my mom at that point, pretty candy company. Who are you? I'm Lois. Uh, Caleb's mom. Now, Lois from Family Guy is Caleb's mom. Now, she's basically the general manager. And keep in mind, this company has been started four years ago. Now, the best thing is, out of everyone hired, no one knew how to make candy. None of them. They were going into this completely fresh. It was basically only Caleb. Now, Jesse originally was basically like a handyman or general helper. He was the blue phantom. You'd summon in Dark Souls. He'd kind of do his bit and then just go home. And then Umpaville talks about how he basically signed with a company that were based in Sweden, a Swedish candy company. To the Pie Candy Company. The initial response response was crazy for only having two flavors and also two just basic simple things. It was really just to test the idea to see if it would work. And then he did two flavors and they, you know, sold really well. So far, the story's really positive. And then eventually, like most East celebs do, they moved their company down to Texas. Like how you hear every single Twitch streamer moving to Texas because there's like zero capital gains tax. I figured it was just a natural thing to, to move down. Plus taxes, <laughs> a little better than Virginia, to be honest. Now, Forrest is another character. I know we're introducing a lot of characters and it's only season one. Trust me, it's better to get the context out of the way first. Now, Forrest was another childhood friend and basically became the COO or chief operating officer. Now, he's forklift certified. Expired. I got forklift certified at one point, but it might be expired. I don't know. I can drive a forklift though. 
and they actually knew each other since they were three to four years old. So this goes back quite a lot. Now, the next step was Umpa trying to expand from just his two base flavors. But at this point, two other people, Cole and Rifty, split away from the company. What was the next step from there? Me and Rifty is spiffy. We decided that the next step would be to have more than just two flavors. I am no longer part of Sour Boys. And the problem is now, Umpa had to basically incur a fat debt. And on top of that, risk half a million dollars just for candy machines. Because I wanted to, to do the manufacturing thing. And in order to do that, I had to incur debt and take on a lot of unnecessary risk. That, that is the point in which, in which that separated, when that massive load, that hot load of half a million dollars of candy machine equipment just uh, on my, uh, my shoulders. Uh, uh. <laughs> now, how Umpa got involved in this, he met a guy called Zelderon on Discord. As we know, a lot of good relationships start on Discord. Honestly, out of every nine failed e-dates there are on Discord, there is one good friendship to be made on that cesspit of a platform. And Umpa was basically trying to find out how the process of making candy works. I met a fellow named Jake aka Zelderon on my Discord server. And he, at the time, was an industrial automation engineer. So kind of had a budding friendship there. I got the idea and I asked him, hey man, would you be interested in helping with the candy? Could, is there a way we could kind of develop something to manufacture? So he was like my guy on the case, basically, doing research because he's an industrial automation engineer. Now, this is where Umpa took on a lot. And I mean a lot of debt. This is like Walter White trying to set up his family like, like after he dies. He took on a fat loan of debt, two bank loans. And on top of that, he actually had to part sell one of his channels. And then obviously Umpa goes into a list of like all the stressful moments that he's gone through. Basically like a Vietnam War vet just sat there in the hospital bed or the rocking armchair trying to recall every time he was shot at. You're incurring all this debt. What's the next step? Irritable bowel syndrome, brought on by chronic stress, panic attacks, a short stint of homelessness. What do you want to know during this time? It was very stressful. It was a very difficult time. I was also posting every single day. And then after all of this, Umpa again moves to a more rural area because of complications. Umpa now has to live in the warehouse and he's effectively homeless. I actually remember having a conversation with him. I think it was either Discord or Twitter DMs where he was literally telling me at the time he was living in the warehouse. This is basically up there with Elon Musk sleeping at Tesla. But the thing is, he had a choice to. And then on top of that, you've got Clint adding saying that, you know, Caleb uh, Umpaville was basically just miserable, but also overreacting. Like, he'll be fine. Plot twist. He was not fine. How do you think Caleb was feeling during this time? Uh, he seemed miserable, but I feel like he was overreacting and it's not that big of a deal. He'll be all right. It was terrible. I didn't shower the whole time. Now at this point, machines were being built with a contract of anywhere between 10 to 35 weeks. And then on top of that, he bought an additional warehouse and there was a delay because of COVID. The main delay was parts coming in to assemble the other parts. And that alone could have taken weeks. The initial contract showed 10 weeks to 35 weeks, I believe. I can't remember exactly, but 10 weeks minimum turnaround. So I was like, so ready, you know, spending money on stuff. I bought an additional warehouse space in that time. Just, it was all coming together. Honestly, like like reading into this story more and more, I, I feel so sorry for Caleb because just the amount of money he sunk in, the amount of delays. And on top of that, he hired someone that basically had a, a Genshin impact addiction and, and rinsed him. Now this is interesting because Clint later claims in the video that there might be a mole. Are you aware that Caleb has been scammed? I, it's seeming likely. There, there's definitely a mole amongst us. Some would say an imposter. Now at this point, everything, thank God, is done. They just need to get the machine done. And then he told his employees and friends to pick up the machine, which was in Georgia, which was well over a thousand miles away. I, I genuinely keep forgetting how large America is compared to the UK. You went to help get the machine in Georgia, right? I did. I drove 1,000 miles, approximately. How did that go? It was a good, rough, rough ride. Me and a buddy went well. So this is the point where we get introduced to Jake and the impressions that people got off him weren't really the best. Apparently he was very sloppy, frazzled hair, twitchy, greasy, a lot of ad hominem there, but it, it's not great. How was meeting Jake? Meeting Jake was, it was a pleasure to meet the, the engineer who has fabricated all this equipment. I felt he was a bit nervous, maybe sweaty. Can you do an impression of him? I can, I can. Jake, he, he was a little just. 
Jake was like very sloppy <laughs> and uh, like just frazzled hair, very like twitchy, pale, greasy. <laughs> like, but the good news is, you know, it, it's whatever because you know, hooray, hooray, the machines are in, hooray. Now Jake under contract, contract, signed contract by the way, had to install the machines. But uh, Jake just, he fucking despawned. He's just not there. Uh, I'm assuming all the parts finally get down there. And then so does Jake and he comes down and starts the machine. No. And of course there were more delays. There, there are more delays in this video than Half-Life 3. So apparently the packaging machine in Georgia also got delayed. However, it was in pieces and he needed those parts to be in Texas. Now from August, their target date is basically moved to November. They, they wanna do the entire launch in November. But then after that, of course, came just a, a bunch of radio silence. So, and at that point, I think he gave me a timeline of around November from August, but really it was just a lot of radio silence. And then November 2022 rolls around. And then this is when it gets a lot worse because Jake reaches out to Caleb in November 2022 and basically says, can I get some money? Just a little bit of money. Just, uh, I don't know, $130,000 of money. Everything, basically, to get us from zero to 60 to launch. Uh, and it was 130 grand. And I sent him the money in November of 2022. Did you think the candy was going to launch after Caleb gave Jake the 130,000? Um, yeah, I was like, it seemed like uh, Jake had made some some mistakes and like he had not estimated what the cost of the, the job was going to be. And then at that point, Jake said he couldn't work because he got pneumonia. His lungs apparently had to be drained of fluid so he couldn't work. So in December, pretty much no work progressed. And I get a text from Jake, hey man, not feeling good in the hospital. Uh, I have double lung pneumonia or something. Now at this point, Caleb Umperville was basically waiting for Jake's surgery to be over and so everything could be wrapped up. Basically, all he needed was someone to come over and fix the machine. Jake couldn't do it, so he sent one of his friends over, Will. So I suggested that he just send his, his co-worker will uh in his stead to help us just get the ball rolling and at this point will seems incredibly incompetent he doesn't really show up for work uh he doesn't really seem to be willing to help and this really annoyed umperville you know rightfully so like imagine sinking this much money into a project and then people you start to hire like friends of friends they just end up being completely incompetent just npcs you know just like just walk, walking into a wall like this like, like doing nothing it's just, they're, they're not helping at all so it just seemed like will didn't really want to help us. It seemed like Will was there to slow us down. Either that or Will was completely incompetent. The first couple days Forrest was working with Will when they were actually getting stuff done, he was like calling me like, dude, this is bad. I don't know what this guy, like, it, it, I hope Jake is better at this kind of stuff because we're not gonna be able to launch unless we, we, you know, get someone else to help us. I, and this is when it gets actually infuriating. Like, I, I genuinely feel sorry for Umperville now. Umperville basically has to end up lying to get information about the situation and, you know, get more insight. I, Im imagine even having to lie just to understand how your own operation is scamming you out of money. Will hadn't been paid. Things are getting worse with Jake. There's no money. I told Will, hey man, I'll pay your back pay. How about that? Let me pay you what Will owes you and that's between me and you. Let's get this shit done. I was, I was starting to talk to him in a way that was almost manipulative uh, from my perspective, being like, hey man, if you, if you can help us get this done, like I'll, I'll hire you. Whatever you're getting paid by Jake, I'll double it and you can work for us. Like it seems like you know what you're doing. I was just lying to him essentially to try to get information because things were starting to, to, to turn black. It was fucking weird for a minute. Yeah, so I paid his back pay and the next day he started working a lot harder for us. And it was like just in a, with on an instant thing sort of changed, which was even more suspicious to be honest. So Umberville paid his back pay. Jake never came back to work, but he did ask for money. Yeah, you know what? I didn't actually do any work. Uh, um, could I get paid though? I actually haven't shown up to work like once, but I'd, I'd like money, please. I'd like to spend it on more gacha games, please. Right before Will was supposed to leave, Umperville basically begged him to, you know, please finish the job. Finish the job you were paid to do, you know? And the next morning, Jake calls me back and says, yo man, $35,000 will get me one week and then another 35,000 will get me another week. I laugh, I started laughing. I was like, of course. This same day too that Jake says this, Will dropped a massive bombshell that shook the earth to its core. 
the worst thing is this is a business venture for umperville like he he has never done anything like this before i talked to him about it a little bit privately and he was terrified about how much money he sunk into it you know like i've already mentioned he's had to take loans out but basically he's been in the red using a lot of his own money to fund this project and then he finds out that people he's taken on have basically just completely scammed him out of all of his money but yeah overall my sympathy goes out to umperville because you know like he has been in a really shit situation where he's basically had to expose his scammer someone that took advantage of him to do fucking gacha games like honestly if he was doing slots or roulette or something i wouldn't i wouldn't justify it but it'd be so much better than gacha really genshin impact skins come on bro but yeah obviously send him some love he's a great youtuber great creator uh really nice guy to talk to very honest down-to-earth guy